Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar. Today's topic is on e-takeoff and estimating with presenters Rob Napa from Accordant Company and David Seneca from e-takeoff. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Everyone is in listen-only mode, so if you have questions, please type them into the questions box on the screen, and we will address them at the end of the session. This webinar will be recorded, and we will email out a copy to everyone later today. I will now turn it over to you, Rob. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Napa. I'm the director of estimating at the Accordance Company. And uh, what we're going to do today is review a very powerful takeoff tool called eTakeoff. eTakeoff is a Sage supported digital takeoff uh, solution that is fully integrated with the Sage estimating tools, which we will uh, review towards the end of the pr presentation. Um, and what I'd like to do today, <clears throat> or now, is introduce David Snedeker. David is the Vice President of Development at eTakeoff. Um, and being the expert that he is, I've asked him to join us and run through a, a basic presentation of the tool. Um, towards the end of uh, his presentation, we'll take questions about eTakeoff. So type them in, and, and Crystal will uh, will pass them along to us so we can answer. And then I'm going to jump in and show you how we take the dimensions from e takeoff that's generated in e takeoff and drop those into or send those over to the Sage estimating tool, which will then price out uh, items from your Sage estimating database. Show you how that integration works. Uh, so right now, um, I'm going to turn everything over to David. David, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Rob, and thanks, Krista. Um, good morning. David here with eTakeoff. We'll, we'll start out uh, by talking about, in general, the interface, um, <clears throat> how the program works and functions, uh, some help functions that you can get, uh, and then we'll talk about some measuring, uh, basic measuring, and then we'll go into some more advanced features. Uh, like uh, assemblies inside of eTakeoff, and we'll do. We'll, I'm going to show a little bit of. Uh, we have a real uh, powerful Excel integration, uh, so if you're interested in Excel as well, we can talk about that. So <clears throat> to begin with, uh, eTakeoff is designed using Microsoft's ribbon uh, interface. So tabs at the top. <clears throat> excuse me. So you can multiple tabs. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Even though it is winter here in Colorado, I still have allergies, so I apologize for that. <clears throat> so home tab, you know, uh, most everything you need to, to run basic takeoff, uh, setting scales, changing drawings, all that is in the home tab. And then there's other tabs that, that uh, allow you to get to other functions in the program. We allow the, you to use what's called the quick access toolbar, which is this little toolbar here. By default, that toolbar is usually placed up at the top. You can always put it where you want, either up above. I like it below the ribbon. It's easier access to it, so I use this little drop down and place below toolbar. I can put any button on this quick access toolbar that I want. And if there's multiple users uh, in, the, uh, uh, in your organization using the program, this is user specific. So if I want to Say let's, I do a lot of annotations, and I want text annotations on my drawing. I just simply right-click and add to Quick Access Toolbar, and then I've got that text annotation tool right there. I don't have to flip back and forth between multiple tabs. Our program uh, is built in with lots of help wherever you go. Really, all you have to do is hover your mouse over a button, and you will get help functions right there. These are called tooltips, but we do more than tooltips. We give a pretty good uh, you know, uh, session of help in there. So the top portion is kind of the help, what the buttons do, what the function is. The bottom is always shortcuts that are associated with that specific button. Uh, and any button uh, you can hover over. Even ones that are grayed out, like these two that aren't currently available to use, you can still hover over those. And the, the, the tooltips also work uh, right here in the Quick Access Toolbar. 
Okay, then everything's saved for you. So once I've done this and I've moved my quick access toolbar down here, I've added buttons, it all gets saved. There's no saving in the program at all. It's automatically saves everything you do. I don't think we even have a save button anywhere in the program. So that's the toolbar, um, the ribbon bar. And then we have two control panels by default. There's this control panel on the left, and there's another control panel over here on the right. Those allow you to... Uh, uh, put in controls that you want to use to uh, function and run the program. By default, we have a set of controls. At the top on the left, we have traces. That's what you use to measure. If I'm going to measure a length, I would just double click here and measure a length. So we call those traces. Um, and there's multiple folders with multiple templates in here that come pre-designed for the program. If you want to use them, you can always build your own in the program. Below that is a rotation control where you can just rotate a drawing if you want to. If it's not rotated correctly, simply click what you want and it'll save that rotation for you. Then the list of drawings for the current project are here. So you can simply double click on a drawing and it'll bring up that drawing for you. On the right hand side is what's called the quantity list. That is, if I'm taking a measurement, I'm just going to do a quick you know, length measurement. My quantity for that specific measurement will show up here. And then the summary here is the summary of all the measurements on this specific page, this drawing. And then there's a button here to li list all the measurements on the entire project. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Now, control panels are, are flexible. I can just simply click, hold, and drag it and move it where I want to. I could take a control panel, put it on top of another one. I could take this control panel and throw it off onto another monitor. I have another monitor over here on the left side of, my, of this monitor, so I could have my control panel on the left uh, allowing me to have more visible drawing space. If I want to dock this, I can simply use the option button here and dock my control panel to the left. Uh, you can add controls. You can minimize controls. I don't want to see the drawing, the drawing, uh, drawing list here all the time. I can use the minimize, and I can show my layer list, for example, uh, what all the layers that I have set up. So you can minimize and maximize any of the controls. Again, that all gets saved. Okay. You can also open up multiple windows. Um, let's say I want to look at. Uh, uh, instead of going back and forth between an elevation and a floor plan, I could stay on the floor plan and then open the elevation in another window and put it on another uh, monitor if I wanted to. That's view extra drawing window. And then let's go to that elevation page. And there it is. And then I can size this and I can move it over to my other screen. I can open up as many of these as I want to. In our Premiere version, you can actually annotate right in this window. So I could annotate on, on this drawing if I wanted to. So, and again, it saves those windows, what drawings are in it, what monitor they're on, uh, by project. All right. So pretty simple functionality. Let's talk about you know manipulating a drawing, taking some measurements, you know, navigating. If I want to zoom in on any particular section of a drawing, I just point my mouse pointer where I want to roll, uh, zoom in, roll my scroll wheel forward. And it zooms in right around where my mouse pointer is. Zoom out, roll backwards. If I want to pan the drawing or move it around while it's at this zoom level, just hold both mouse buttons down and, and drag it. And it zooms, uh, it pans that drawing. Now again, we saved this. So let's say I went to another, uh, uh, another drawing. Let's say I just skipped over to the elevation page. And now I want to go back to that uh, page I was just on. A couple things you could do. You could find it in the list. Uh, and click on it. Or I, uh, we have navigation shortcuts. Uh, this is previous drawing. This is next drawing, kind of like a browser, right, on the internet. You can go previous and next. I also have shortcut keys for that. If you notice, I'm hovering over here. Behind that, it's previous drawing. That looks like a left arrow key. So on my keyboard, left arrow, boom, it takes me back to the previous drawing I was on prior to the one. And now forward, right arrow key. So I can move between those fairly quickly. You can also set up predefined views. We call those named views. And there's a control for that. So if you want to set up a named view, I, which I've already set up, for example, east elevation, I just double click on it and it takes me there. Wall sections, so on and so forth. So you can set these up fairly quickly um, <clears throat> uh, by simply say, clicking, I want a new view, a new named view. Uh, go to the drawing you want to name, 
uh, and then type in the name. Now, you not only can you just double click these to bring them into this window. Let's go back to my floor plan here. Let's say I want this wall section in, you know, I want it in one of those extra drawing windows. I can simply right click on it and show this in a new extra drawing window. And there's that named view in this drawing window and I could have those over on my other screen. So, named views are really nice. You can set them up by project and then just use them however you want to. Okay, uh, let's talk about measuring now. First, you've got to set the scale. I mean, when you, when you create a project, uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let me go back here. If I'm going to create a new project, let's talk about just, you know, project in general, and then we'll get into the scales and the drawings. Um, <clears throat> you can have a project kind of anywhere you want. Typically, you want to put all your project drawings in a special folder, give it the project name, and then, uh, you know, you could either have it on your desktop, you could have it in a predefined folder. We automatically create a folder called eTakeoff Projects, and that's the default when you start the program. You can change that to another folder. You could put all your projects on a server if you want to uh, and access them from there. But the way you build a project is simply oh, click the new project button like we did, point to the folder that you want to uh, open um, or create, uh, click OK, fill out any information you want to. We automatically name your project the name of the folder, and you can enter any of this information if you want. You could set a default scale. Um, where I was kind of going with this was default scales, but I typically don't do that because we, we're going to force you to validate that scale on every drawing the first time you want to measure on it anyway. Um, and you know, a default scale kind of assumes that the whole project has the same scale, which is not necessarily true. We automatically check automatic backup for you, uh, which automatically backs up a project uh, when you've made changes to it and saves it outside of the program into a file, uh, so that can be backed up as well. So if you're on the server, um, you could have your backups go to another folder on a server, and your admin, if you've you know, got an admin group, uh, and that server is being managed by your IT admin, uh, then they can back that up as well. So you're always uh, safe there with that backup. Anyway, then you, you just select the drawings and start the project. You get the drawing list, you go to the drawing you want, you set the scale. Scale is set using this uh, button up here. So you can click the button. Sorry, I had to mute you out, the coughing on those allergies. So you can use a standard set of scales, which are built in, that you can choose from. You could type the scale in by just simply typing in the drawing distance and the actual distance. You could also calibrate from the drawing if you had a known dimension on the drawing. So whichever way you want is fine. And then click OK, you've got your scale. Once the scale is set, you can start measuring. So let's just do a quick, let's do some flooring here real quick just to illustrate that. You could use the templates if you like. Um, there is a, a template for flooring if you wanted to use that. You could also just kind of start from scratch. If you use these four generic trace tools, um, <clears throat> you can change them as you go. For example, I'll click area. It'll pop up what we call the easy trace creator, and I can call this, you know, um, uh, carpet two or whatever I want to call it. I can change the colors. I can do all of that here, uh, change transparencies. And then I can save this. Let's say I want to build these as I go. I could build a trace uh, for my trades, whatever it is you do specifically, and save it as I go. So, for example, if I click OK, I'm going to start measuring with this carpet two trace that we just built, and it's going to save over here. So notice it's over here, and now I'm going to start measuring. Click in the corners. We measure. This is very simple. I'm not doing it very accurately, obviously. But now I've got that measurement. I can start another measurement. by If I want to do more carpet, too, double-click here and start another measurement. Um, <clears throat> you could also use the shortcut key N, which will use the same trace as you just used. So if I, use, if I hit N, I am now measuring again without having to go over there and click, uh, using the exact same trace we've been using. Okay, now let's uh, 
now I've got to do some tile maybe. So I can start another area and call this uh, ceramic and again change the colors if I want, do whatever I want to do here. And this is going to be really ugly. Okay. So click OK. It's going to save it. Got ceramic there and then I can just measure inside this bathroom, so on and so forth. So you get the idea. So you can, uh, once you've got these measured, um, I'm going to hit enter again and, and finish that measurement. My summary is over here. I've got uh, one, two, three carpet two measurements and I've got a ceramic measurement. Now I can name these as I go if I want to. For example, if I wanted to name this, this is uh, 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 standard room 201, I can simply hit my D key when this measurement is selected and change the description of that from carpet two. This is the measurement description. You'll see that in a minute. I'm going to call this SD201. Uh, Enter. Now I've got carpet two, but it's labeled kind of by location, SD201. And as I'm going along measuring, I can do that as I go. So for example, if I do this measurement, boom, 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 hit the D key right now, label it as uh, S, S, maybe. SK207, uh, enter, um, enter again to save that, and now I've got those labeled. So pretty simple. You start measuring. You can use these if you want to uh, name them as you go. You could use the templates that are here. You could actually start out by creating your own set of templates if you wanted to, and that would be settings, edit traces. So. Here's all my traces. I have these. I could put. I could take these now and put them in my flooring folder, for example. If I wanted to now move those into a flooring folder, I just drag them into my. Oops. Drag them into my flooring folder, and now I've got my folder with all the different types of traces that I have for flooring. And then you could build new ones here. So I could right-click, add a trace. So you could come out and build them before you start measuring, or you could simply use the. Uh, easy trace buttons up here and build them as you go. And again, what you've got your summary here, let's take a look at the summary for the whole project, which would be this button here, which is called the measurement list. And it lists all the uh, measurements on this project. I'm going to delete that column and I'm going to delete that column for now. You can have all sorts of different column configurations here in any kind of order you want to. I can sort them how I want to. Um, so I could sort them by the trace, for example, ascending order, and it would sort them. Uh, and then I could move this stuff into Excel, or uh, you can actually uh, integrate, like Rob said earlier, uh, right into Sage Estimating. We'll get back to that. OK, so standard areas. We've done areas. Counts, if you want to count something. We've got lengths, perimeters. Length is just point to point. So if I was going to do um, uh, wall type typing is not required for estimating uh, wall type one we we'll just leave it like that and then I could just measure you know a specific wall type and measure it and get the length um, so same kind of thing it's saved over here <coughs> excuse me and uh, you can measure lengths now let's talk a little bit about um, counting uh, counting is pretty simplistic you can do multiple ways for example I can just I'm going to click this count uh, and not name it. And I could count doors. I could count toilets. I could count partitions. I could count, you know, whatever it is you want to count: fixtures, outlets, um, fire security, whatever it is. And I can just go along and point and click and click and click and click. And again, it saves that um, as whatever it is you're counting. We also have um, a function uh, that's called pattern search that allows you to count. Um, kind of automatically. Uh, some uh, competitors of ours call that auto count. Uh, we call it pattern search because we're searching a drawing for a pattern. And we'll come back to that here in just a second. We want to show you some more, uh, some assembly stuff first, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the counting more and about the uh, about the pattern search. I've created pre-created template uh, for frame and drywall. Uh, metal wall, for example. I'm just going to double click that and I'm going to just take a measurement. Boom, boom. Now, this wall has more information, this trace has more information than just length. It allows me to put in a wall type, for example. 
Um, I could put in wall type A uh, for this project, and I could give it the size, and I could give it the you know stud gauge and wall height. Maybe this is 12 foot high walls or whatever, right? 16 uh, inch on center stud spacing. I want to put drywall on both sides of that, and I want to use the drywall side size. Whatever, whatever it is you want to do here, right? So this is an assembly. We call these extensions inside of eTakeoff. Assemblies is what they're called in Sage Estimating. So based on this information that I just filled out, I get all of this results. I get the, the length of the wall. I get the area, the square foot of the wall, considering it's on both sides, and the height of the wall. Um, I get the number of 4 by 10 sheets that I uh, selected here and it's rounded up as you can see the number of studs rounded up the length of track how many rolls of tape uh, how many gallons of joint compound and how many pounds of screws so and these are all formula based right so based on my input the this one for example actually saves itself as the name based on what you put in so this is wall type a three and five eighths inch twelve foot eighteen gauge two sided four by ten wall so that's really, really great, powerful features that are built into this uh, into this program uh, that allow you to get more done. So I got a lot of results here for one single measurement, and then I can use this over and over again, uh, and uh, continue to measure wall type A or do a wall type B. So that's kind of what we call a, an extension or an assembly, and those are these are pretty much unlimited. Um, they also can match exactly what comes out of Sage Estimating. Uh, in fact, you can, <laughs> Rob may or may not show this, but I'll tell you about it. You can take uh, an assembly item from Sage, drop it onto one of these traces, and it'll build that exact assembly, name it, um, and give it a specific type like length. If I had a, if I had a wall assembly uh, in Sage Estimating, I could drop it on this length and it would create uh, that exact assembly, that trace in here with the assembly items in it automatically. Pretty powerful stuff. And then you just map it, measure it, and send it back on over to Estimating with all your quantities. Okay, that is the assembly function. And there, the, these templates, when you start using the program, uh, these templates give you, you know, there's probably a, a, an assembly uh, or an as extension built for every single trade that's in here. Uh, so you can start playing with that and uh, working with it and, and uh, seeing how it works for you and then build your own if you want. All right, let's 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 quickly go down here to uh, my, uh, this electrical drawing. We're going to talk about the pattern search. Pattern search searches a drawing for a specific pattern. You tell the program by outlining the pattern on the drawing what it is you want to search for, and then you tell it where you want to search. So we call that a, a search area. I pre-designated an area on this drawing. That's my search area. I, I want to search within this area. I don't want to search outside of it at all because nothing I'm going to look for is out here. I don't want to search the title block. So I can tell it this is named main. This is my main search area. Um, so when I'm ready to go, I'll tell it I want to search there. I'm going to do a quick, easy search. Uh, we're going to look for this, uh, uh, this smoke alarm, this fire alarm. I'm going to zoom in. Of course, the main pattern search is on the drawing tab. I moved it here to my quick access toolbar. But I'm going to click here. And I'm going to start a search. I get a hint window that tells me what to do. When you, we always do that with most functions. Once you've learned the program, uh, you can just not display that hint. And it says drag a rectangle around the pattern. So I'm just going to drag a box around this pattern. It's going to show up like this. I'm going to narrow it down a little bit. I'm going to tell it uh, what percentage I want to search for. I, um, I want to search for anything that matches this at 80% or greater. I'm going to search my main area, and I'm going to select the trace I want it to um, uh, save it as when I count it, and that's going to be a smoke detector. Now I'm going to go ahead and search. I could search rotations if that was necessary on this drawing, but it's not. Um, these are all straight up, and I could exclude any other count that I've done on this drawing as well. I'm going to go ahead and say search immediately. We do have a background search, which we'll talk about here in a second, and then I'm going to click search. It's going to go off and search and find and give me the results. Here's, here's what it found. 
Um, I can review this. Of course, I can put this on another monitor if I want to. I can re review these results multiple ways. I can double click on this and it'll find which one that is on the drawing and it'll show it to me, right? I could review on the drawing by clicking here and then just I can zoom out and look at them and review them across the drawing and see where there are, zoom in and check them. I can uncheck them if I wanted to, if it doesn't match or whatever. Um, I'm going to uh, end the review and go back to this mode. Um, I can also uh, view around this search area a little bit more. We made that pretty tight to search in on it. I can drag this box out and it's going to show me um, some more around the actual search. It doesn't change the search, it just shows me around that pattern on the drawing what else is there. So for example here I found an auxiliary that I'm not going to count with my smoke detector. This is a heat detector so I'm disabling those two. Then I'm going to go, let's go ahead and count those. So I'm going to say save and continue. What's going to happen is it's going to count these ones that are green uh, and put a symbol on the drawing for smoke detector and they're going to disappear from this window and allow me to continue counting the other two that I have. So save and continue. Those have been counted. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to say I want to make this the auxiliary contact and I'm going to save and continue and count that. Now this is my heat detector. Now I'm going to go ahead and say heat detector and then I'm going to save and I'm going to be done. Here's my summary. I got one heat detector, one smoke, uh, one auxiliary and I got 17 smoke detectors. So now I've done that. Let's say um, now I got to go to the next drawing, right? This is uh, um, the next floor, right? So I got to go here and do that. Well, we allow you to do this searching uh, on the rest of the drawings in the project if you want to, and you can do that in the background. I'm going to add my pattern search control, which gives me a list of everything I've searched for on this project. You can search for piers on the concrete on the foundation plan, uh, but I could say I want to search for these two items. Uh, I want to search on multiple drawings and I can tell I want to search on those other two drawings that I have here and boom and it goes off and automatically starts searching and brings up the results on the next drawing. So once I'm done that shows my results here on the next two drawings uh, I can go off and and go ahead and count those and review them and and uh, um, count the rest of the drawings that I want to. The nice thing about this pattern search is it it'll do that in the background if there was a big search, like I was searching, you know, outlets and there were, you know, 200 outlets on this floor. It would just do it in the background and I could go off and do something else. And it would do it in the background on all the rest of the drawings that I had checked. I could search for 50 items on multiple drawings in the background and I could go off and do whatever else work I want to do. And then it'll find it when it's ready and you can review it and, and have it count like we just did. That's pattern search. Very nice, very nice feature. Patent patented. Some of the parts of that are patented. Uh, so we're really proud of that function. Okay, let's go back here. Let's talk about real quickly. Um, I'm going to zoom back in here to my second floor. Let's talk real quickly about some integration uh, features. Uh, <clears throat> we could take uh, these quantities and link them into an Excel spreadsheet uh, and, and by type of quantity, not by, um, not just for this project, we can set up a template that's linked for every project. Okay, that's our Excel integration. I got a little tiny little spreadsheet here that I've already linked studs and track and so on and so forth in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this out. I'm going to make these four by eight, and then I'm going to take uh, this cell and drag it over here to show you how linking works. I can simply say I want to take this item right here, 4 by 8, drag it into the 4 by 8 cell, and it's not going to work because I didn't have it set up right. <laughs> what it did is it dragged the value instead of a, a code link. So I'm going to do that again, and we're going to take this, we're going to drag it again, and now it's going to create a formula, which is a formula based on the integration. It's uh, going to name it, and it's going to—it's um, the uh, metal wall which we used, uh, trace, and it's the item, the variable called sheets four by eight, 
So now four by eight sheets are linked into this um, as long as I want to keep it that way. I've already linked all of these. So you notice it says no project selected, no current project selected, because this is kind of generic. It's linking this value, but then once you've done that, you have to tell the program which project from e takeoff. You have to tell Excel which project do I want to pull quantities in from. So I can come up here to the add in function, e takeoff, select current project. And this is the uh, Straight La Quinta Hotel, which is this one. Click OK, and it should pull in all the quantities from this project. And if I make changes, let's go do another measurement. Let's take, uh, where am I? Let's take this. I'm going to take this. I'm just going to copy this, which I can do. So uh, I'm going to move copy. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to, I'm just going to make a bunch of these, right? And I'm going to take these walls out here, and these are obviously not very accurate, but Got those down. Now I'm going to just go refresh and let's see what happens here. Boom, refreshed. So now I've got it's linked. This Excel sheet is now linked. I could name it by the project name and say this is my estimate for this project. Um, and it would continue to keep track of everything that I do on this project as long as I refresh it. And once you've done a link, you can actually have a template, right? Uh, and use this over and over again because it's linked with all your, your base quantities. Uh, and it'll just automatically come in when you select the project. So it's a real nice feature, uh, the Excel integration. Okay. Do we have, uh, looking for, where's the question panel? Krista, do we have uh, any questions that have come up so far that yes, we might we want have, to answer at this point? Yes, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, the okay. first one is, can you drag tools down to the quick toolbar? Drag. No, can't drag, but you just simply um, hover your button, uh, hover your mouse over it. Let's go back to here. If I wanted to have extra drawing windows, I uh, uh, add, right click on that button, add the quick access toolbar, and then that is there. But you can't drag them, but you can just right click on them and add them to the quick access toolbar. And if I hope that's what the question was to the quick access toolbar. If you're talking about dragging things to a control panel. The options button here allows you to open whatever controls we have available in this control panel or, of course, this control panel, right? So there's no dragging, but there is right-clicking. Okay, Other, another question? Another question is, do you have an undo or a redo button? We do have an undo, um, but no redo. We only undo certain certain levels. So let's do this measurement. Oh, uh, boom, 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 boom. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm going to undo. And the undo is either the undo button. You got the backspace as a backspace key on the keyboard as a shortcut, and Control Z as a shortcut. But it'll undo uh, back to the beginning of that. But once it's done, once it's set in place, I finish that off with Enter or S to finish that measurement. There's no undo from this point. In order to do that, you'd have to delete this measurement and start over. So we have undo during measurement. And there's certain certain functions of undo, but that's that's how extensive the undo is, but no redo. OK, the next question okay. is, can you overlay drawings, say a 65% design over a 35% design? Yes. Uh, we call that drawing compare. Um, I won't go through that, but I'll, I'll explain it. You start with the base drawing, whatever you want as your original drawing. Maybe you've got a new drawing that comes in, and you want to compare it. You want to lay that on top of. It is called Drawing Compare. Uh, and you would uh, start the process here, uh, and it would tell, ask you to pick the drawing you want to put on top of this one. Then you'd align it, and then you can see the differences. Yes. We actually save that compare as well, so you can revisit it whenever you want. I could take this as my base drawing and then um, lay uh, the uh, third floor over it. I could lay the first floor over it, not at the same time, but I could save multiple compares um, and review them uh, one at a time if I wanted to. But yes, that function is available. The nice thing about our compare function is that once I've got them there, the measurements from the original will show through, so you can see all the measurements. You could then, if you needed to, take measurements and move them to the new drawing. Let's say it's an addenda. Um, I could multi-select the measurements, and then I could right-click and move them from the original drawing to the addenda drawing, or to the new drawing, uh, and then make my changes there. I don't have to redo my takeoff 
on the new drawing. You can just move them from one to the other. That's uh, that's a really nice feature. Okay. Okay. The next question is: um, Is there a template for fire sprinkler or suppression? Well, what we have here is here, but if you're using Sage estimating, I'm sure that um, Rob uh, Sage has uh, some some assemblies and some database stuff for that. We do. You could build them in. Yeah, so you could either uh, you could get that through Sage and then have those. Uh, you could move those into here um, and use that. We, we've got some rudimentary stuff here. Um, like I said, these are these are just basic things to get started with. Um, but if you're going to be using uh, Sage estimating or you are using Sage estimating, if you have anything in there, you can bring it right over to eTakeoff and use it here. And we'll teach you also in eTakeoff <clears throat> how to build those traces. Um, to your heart's content. Okay, the next question is, can you count multiple items with one trace, such as carpet, and also the perimeter of the trace for the base? Sure. That would be like an assembly. So this measurement here um, is, I've got, not only do I have the area, I also have the perimeter at the same time, so we keep track of that. You could, I have a template for, just a real basic template for uh, carpet and base, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to assign this measurement with this trace, and it changes, and you could even do things like, I'm going to, I'm going to measure the area, which is my area, then I'm going to say, well, my base length is minus the door, I've got, I got uh, two doors there maybe. Boom, and so what it does is it takes the perimeter of my area measurement, subtracts two doors at three feet, and um, gives me the total base length there. So that's kind of like an assembly. You could build those however you want to and use those. You have The assembly can allow you to do anything you want, pretty much. Okay, the next question is, can you copy a trace for another area? Yes. So... Um, for example, this room is the exact same as, let me get rid of these here. This room is the same as this room, right? Same layout. I could take this. We have a multifunction button called Move Copy. I can click the button or use the shortcut key, which is M, which I'm going to do, and then it's a move. I could move that measurement. I'll move it back. And if I want to copy it, I just hold the Control key, and I can copy that measurement over to here. Uh, so I can do it that way. We also have a, another function for um, kind of copying we call favorites. So that's one way to do it. Shortcut key M, hold the control key, and, and copy those wherever they belong. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. I held it too long and got a close-up window. All right. So we have a function called favorites. It's kind of like saving things um, like favorites in a uh, uh, in your browser, I want to use those use that over and over again. I could take this and I could put it in here, and then I could go to another floor. Let's say I go to the third floor, right? And I could uh, take it off and move it to here. I could do that with the entire the entire floor. Hold on, let's do that. I'm going to delete that. Let's go back to the second floor. Um, let's go take all of these. And we're going to go, boom, and that's all of those. And I can go to the third floor, and then I could say, I want to take all of these and put them in here. And, I mean, I could do the entire floor, everything that's on it, if I wanted. So that's multiple ways to copy. We also, favorites is kind of cool, because what favorites allows you to do is go from dissimilar scale drawings. Um, as an example, I could take... Uh, Okay, the next question is... is well, there, oh, oh, hold on. I was going to show one more thing on that oh, copy. It's kind of, kind of a nice feature. So, for example, I've got these typical rooms here. I could take... and delete that. I could take all of this for this typical room, which is a typical unit type 1, and I could put them in here, and I could name that um, unit type 1, right? Which and this this project is a, this page is a quarter inch, 
and then I could go to the first floor plan where I need to, you know, measure all these units, um, and it's an eighth of an inch. I simply just drag it down here, which is uh, unit type one is down here, and then I can uh, rotate those, flip and rotate uh, 270, yes, boom, and then I just need to uh, move that over, and there we are. And that is just for the scale of the drawing. Uh, so that's another way to copy things. So, okay, next question. Go ahead. Okay, next question. Are there any preset traces for the demolition phases of construction? You know, we don't have demolition, I'm sorry to say. Um, we are in the process of revamping all of our base templates. But that templates, traces are very simple to build. So it, would, it doesn't take long to do that, honestly. Um, but if there's some in maybe a, an estimating database, um, you could just drag them over and drop them in and have them. So uh, sorry about that, but we don't have currently have demolition stuff. Next. Can multiple people? By the way, because getting back, getting getting back to that, <clears throat> yeah, I, I just thought, this is Rob again. I want to express that it is very very simple to build your own custom traces. So, you know, if you're in the demolition business, we will show you how to build your own traces that will suit your needs specifically. It's not that it's not that difficult. Yep. Sorry, guys. Can multiple people okay. work on the same job or drawing at the same time? Yes. Um, that uh, would be that the the pro the project database would need to be in a central location, like on the company, the you know, the server, local server, and then we you can point every application, uh, every estimator to the same project database. They can work on the same project, the same drawing at the same time, as many as you want. Yes, that is a function of there's e a couple, Yes, there's a couple of things that I would like to uh, bring up about that as well. So you can have multiple estimators on the same sheet at the same time, which is a great idea because one person could be doing structural and one person could be doing architectural at the same time on the same drawing. Um, that, that's a unique function. Um, also, I would like to just really quickly describe uh, detail sheets and multiple scales because um, where you have a detailed drawing, you might have five different scales on this one sheet. Well, you got to take off tool on the market, makes you copy that sheet five times, and then you take off the detail on that scale that's appropriate uh, for that sheet, or for that one uh, detail. Uh, e takeoff allows you to have multiple scales on a page. So if there are three or four different scales, you, you put a box around that particular detail, and you tell it the scale, and inside that box would be the scale you, uh, um, you determine, and outside that box would be the scale of the sheet. I, I don't believe there is another uh, company, another takeoff tool that can do that. So here, here is their uh, detail number two at a specific scale. Inside that box and outside that box is the scale for the other details. That's really, really powerful. Otherwise, you'd have to copy the sheet five times, and that gets very confusing. I'm sorry. So I'm go ahead, Krista. That's good. Good. Good job, Rob. Thanks. Question. Okay. I don't know if you covered this already. Will you show how to save an area as a template and paste it over multiple areas? Okay. Say that again, please. I don't sure I understand. Will you show how to save an area as a template and paste it over multiple areas? Maybe a copy and paste. I think you went over that. Yeah, that sounds like copy and paste. Okay, so we'll go on. If yeah, it's not, we can, we can, you know, I'm a, if you want individualized, you know, um, stuff, Rob can and can uh, set some some more individual uh, meetings up to go over some of your more specific questions and and you know, kind of get you started on the program. Yeah. The next question is, can you invert or flip that takeoff for the other areas below that are in reverse? Uh, yes. So kind of like we did 
Uh, oh, yes, sorry. Uh, second floor plan. So, for example, I could uh, copy these. Uh, I'm going to hit my M key. I'm going to copy these. And I'm going to put them down here. And then I'm going to select these, deselect that. And then we can uh, flip and rotate. Yep. I can flip vertically, horizontally, rotate them. Uh, flip uh, horizontally, is that right? Yes. Something like that. I think I did it wrong, but you get the idea. I, I messed that up, but yes, you can do that. <laughs> yep. Next. Next is, can the pattern search feature work with favorites? Work with favorites. I'm not oh. sure what that means. That would. I think. Yeah, I think. You, I think they said you put you. You had a project or global favorites uh, of, of let's say a particular count. Can you run pattern search using that favorite? No. Uh, um, pattern search. Well, I mean, if you. That's a more detailed question. We would need to get into uh, one on one. I think. And, and dig into that um, and we're running out of time so and I think Rob you want to uh, show some estimates yeah we'll, yeah, we'll uh, let's let's look at that in, in detail if we can find out who asked that question we can get back on with you and show you how that works yeah yep let's I have that, the information uh, one here. On one. I have one okay. more question okay. do you want it or do you want to move on yeah one yeah, more would be fine one more okay can you show us some built-in reports that eTakeoff has well, reporting is based on measurements, right? And so the report is basically the measurement list. Here's what I've here's what I've done. I can sort this. Uh, I can uh, total it. Uh, uh, I can um, <clears throat> move the columns around. I can sort by multiple columns. I could sort by my trace that I measured with and by drawing. And so I could then total, and I get totals by by trace and by drawing. So how much of what was on each drawing, uh, but this is the main reporting tool uh, for just doing measurements. If you're using Sage Estimating, that's where you're going to get more reporting functionality, uh, and Rob can talk to, uh, about that, but this is the main tool that allows you to uh, look at what you've measured, uh, sort it, total it, um, and then move it around. And you can, you can move these columns around, you can add all sorts of columns. We have you know, we haven't talked about this, but we have a function called WBS, Work Breakdown Structures, which allow you to assign different category values uh, uh, to measurements, and those can also be uh, put into that, that uh, measurement list as columns. So, for example, bid item, if I went back to my measurement list and I want to add the bid item column, then I could see everything by what bid item it is, or what zone it's in, or what you know, whatever, whatever your work breakdowns are. And again, those those can show up here. I can sort or total by those. I can visualize them, um, and then <clears throat> you can also again WBS. You can pass WBS codes on to uh, Sage Estimating as well, and do reporting mm -hmm. over there based on that. So, right. Good question, though. Okay, Rob. Yeah, I'm not going to give me uh, give me control, Krista, or make me present it rather. Yep, you should have it now. Got it. All right. So, well, real quick, this is stage estimating, and I'm not sure who's online and who's familiar with it right now today. But hang in there. It's going to be kind of quick. Stage estimating is a spreadsheet-based software, and in the background, there's this thing called an estimating database. Here we go. Get this back up. There we go. And estimating is based upon items and assemblies. And what we do in Sage Estimating is we build assemblies. And an assembly, for instance, a foundation assembly. Let's just use that as an example. And I've got a strip footing assembly. Now the idea behind an assembly is when we answer a series of questions up in the upper right hand window, we will then be able to calculate our quantities in this bottom window. So in other words, if I say I have a 100 foot footing and the width is 18 inches by 18 inches deep, and my concrete strength is going to be, uh, let's say, 
2,500 to 3,000 PSI, and I'm going to place it with the direct shoot. And my form uses, well, let's say I'm going to use uh, my forms about four times on this before I have to replace them. I answer a question called uh, about P-Way, right? How are we going to take off the rebar, rebar and so on? The idea is when we answer these questions, we will develop quantities in the bottom and a price per cubic yard or per unit of measure based upon the answers to those specification questions. And when we're done and we click OK, it takes our quantities now, right, all of our takeoff quantities, back into our spreadsheet, and it calculates for us whatever it is you want to calculate. If you don't care about productivity, you just want unit prices, that's fine. If you want more detail, that's fine. I'm just giving you kind of a quick overview of how we do what we do. So we have labor, industry standard labor productivity, which then you can completely adjust to calculate your labor quantity of hours times your daily rate per crew member to get your labor cost and then your material cost. And across this spreadsheet, you'll see some contractor columns, equipment columns, other columns, and then your unit prices. We have an add-on column where we'll put our thing, put things like some profit, overhead, maybe some subcontractor and material markup and contingency and so on. And now those numbers, those below the line numbers go in the add-on column and will be calculated for us automatically to show us, sorry, what our cost is, what we marked it up, and what we're selling the rebar for. That's a really quick explanation of how this estimating tool works. Happy to get online with all of you to talk to you more about this. The idea today, though, is to talk about how we incorporate the takeoff with our estimating tool. And that's where the real power of this solution comes in. So I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to go over here to eTakeoff. I have a simple warehouse project in eTakeoff. Now, <clears throat> My screen is pretty much laid out the same way David is, right? Our drawing tree down here on the bottom. Here are my, my traces. And I have several other folders of traces. Over here are my favorites, quantity list, and so on. So it's all the same. You, you lay this out the way you want to see it. Zoom in and out to the drawing however you see fit. Now you'll notice I have a folder called the BNI. BNI is my estimating database. So I'm actually accessing my estimating database in eTakeoff. Okay. And here is my strip footing that I want to take off. This is the same strip footing we took off a minute ago over in estimating. And you'll notice that my quantity list in my quantity list are the variables that we need to answer. What's the length? The width? concrete strength, how are we placing it, form uses, keyway, and rebar. So now we're in fact going to take off this footing and answer these questions from estimating in the takeoff. The idea is we want you to stay in the takeoff most of the time. That's where you want to be. You're going to be in your takeoff, performing takeoff, looking at your detail sheets, going from drawing to drawing, multiple pages opening at the same time on multiple monitors performing takeoff. Now I've already taken off this, done the scale and all that stuff. So my little uh, arrow here has a room on it, so we're ready to go. Now, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to take this off. And as we scroll across the drawing, I'm just going to go around it in, in, in very quick fashion, like this, right? You can zoom out, zoom in, and when I'm done, you'll notice that, red, that E is red. Okay, that means E take off. Red means we have not answered all of the questions pertaining to this footing yet. You'll notice we do have our length at 487.53 feet, and the next thing I have to answer is what's the footing width in inches, and I'll say 18 inches. I think it's 12, actually. I'm going to say 12 inches. When I move to the next cell, it wants to put that. I'll say 12 again. Move to the next cell. 
you'll notice that E turned black. That means we have satisfied these questions. However, we can open up the window and choose a different variable answer. We can open up the window here just like we could do over in estimating and choose a different answer to these questions. Once we're done, we're done. Now the idea is we would go into the foundation wall, then we would go into the slab, right, and do the same thing. I have a standard slab on grade. Here are my review questions, All right? Six, six, ten, ten wire mesh, six mil poly, broom finish, so on and so forth, and it would be looking for the area in square feet. So quickly, I'll just take that off, thusly, and you'll notice I have a black E. I know that I'm done because I have a four inch slab thickness and all that, but I'm going to change that to six inches. Move to the next. We're ready to go. I'm done with my takeoff. So now I'm 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 killing two birds with one stone. I'm answering the variable question in takeoff. And when we're done, I'm going to start up the bridge. Bridge allows us now to bridge this with my estimating webinar, estimate that I started earlier. I'm going to point to it. Click in the Browse button. Here's my estimating webinar, <clears throat> estimate that I've already started. Give it about a second here. First time I do that, it takes a second. So it's loading, estimating webinar. And you'll notice this is our, our, our assemblies list from over and estimated. Now, I, once you do this one time, the very first time you link your, your takeoff with your estimate assembly, it becomes automatic basically from that point forward. And there are my two things I took off, the slab on grade and the strip footing, and I am all I have to do is click the green button. And what this is doing is sending those dimensions back over into our estimate thusly. And when we open up estimating, and we open up that estimate, give that a second. You will notice under the assembly tab on the bottom of the estimate, we have our original strip footing we took off without using the takeoff, and then we have our strip footing we used E takeoff with, <clears throat> and the slab on grade we used E takeoff with. We know that this came from E takeoff because these cells have a little blue tick in the upper left hand corner. That tells us that these dimensions came from our takeoff. And it brings up our labor costs, our, our material costs, and our add-ons and markups and all of that. Let's go back to phase items. Notice the blue tick gives us what items were pulled from e takeoff. And as we scroll over to the side, by the way, I can combine those. We scroll all the way over to the right-hand side. There's our unit costs. All those add-ons and markups, markups spread appropriately to give us what we're selling those items for. That's powerful stuff. Now here's, here's the real beauty of the software. If I go back to this, I'm not going to do this. We can get into this a little later. Anywhere I see a blue tick mark, we can drill back down and find out where that came from. The idea is a month from now, we get a new set of drawings. Six weeks from now, the project manager comes into the office and said, where the heck did you get that dimension? dimension? That was really wacky. Something was wrong. Well, let me show you. So it is actually opening up bridge, opening up e takeoff, going out and finding the drawing. It's finding the strip footing. It's highlighting the strip footing for us in the background and showing us our dimensions that we took off originally. Now what we can do is if this is a new set of drawings, we can make changes to this original and it will drive those changes back to the estimate for us and tag it with whatever we want to call it. So it's, it's an incredibly powerful tool. We've finally taken an integrated takeoff 
with our estimating tool with auto trail back to the takeoff and then back into the estimate. We want you to spend most of your time in your drawing, performing takeoff, completing your estimate at the same time. I'm a little over time. I know that was quick. Do we have any questions about bridge, integrating takeoff with estimating, or anything else? There are no questions. I must have done a much better job than you did, David. I got no questions. Yes, that's obvious. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, okay. So. I think we're good. Do we have anybody on the line that has a question? And now there are no questions. Okay. Well, we've hit the limit of our time. I want to thank you all for joining us. There is uh, this webinar will be available, as Krista mentioned, uh, in recorded fashion that she'll send out.